Intel reported quarterly financial results after the stock market closed on Thursday, October 31st. Investors liked what they saw from Intel sending the stock price higher by several percent following the announcement. Of course, that makes me happy. I've had Intel stock rated as a buy all year long in 2024. It's been one of my worst rated recommendations this year. The stock is down so much since I recommended it as a buy. It's been disappointing to be sure. So I was happy to see some positive results out of Intel. In this video, I'll review the company's latest financial results and I'll update my buy recommendation for Intel stock. I'll let you know if I still think the stock is a buy or if I'm changing that recommendation following these results released by Intel. So let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, one of the things I wanted to hear more about Intel is on the progress of its big cost cutting plan. It said that it made significant progress on its plan to deliver $10 billion in cost reductions in 2025. Also, the company's forecasting revenue growth in the fourth quarter of 13.8 billion at the midpoint, which would be an increase of 500 million from the current quarter revenue of 13.3 billion. However, the company is still forecasting losses on the bottom line of 24 cents per share in the fourth quarter. Intel has reported losses on the bottom line for several consecutive quarters now, as the company is undergoing major changes in its business operations, huge investments, structural shifts, cost cutting, restructuring. It's been a huge moving thing here with Intel, and it seems like the company bit off more than it can chew, and it's now trying to get things on more manageable basis. And it's understandable why Intel did this huge idea or why they undertook all of these projects simultaneously, partly because Intel had fallen behind on technology to its semiconductor competitors, and it felt the need, the urgency to invest to upgrade to the latest generation technology. Also, the government in the United States and in other parts of the world have offered significant incentives for companies to expand manufacturing capacity. And so Intel had capitalized on that opportunity as well. So it was a meeting of these factors, right? On the one hand, Intel was behind on technology and it needed to invest to catch up. And at the same time, the US government was offering billions of dollars to companies to invest in their manufacturing. So Intel saw this as a great opportunity, right? They needed to invest, they were behind, and there was incentives for investment. So they said, all right, let's do it. Let's bite the bullet. Let's get in here. Let's make these huge investments. It's gonna cost us big time in the short term, but we think longer term it's necessary to bring our business back to the level where it used to be, where we were a leading semiconductor company, and now we've fallen behind. So management saying that they delivered revenue above the midpoint for their guidance and they're acting with urgency to position the business for sustainable value creation moving forward. Revenue in the latest quarter was down 6% year over year to $13.3 billion from $14.2 billion in the same quarter last year. And the biggest reason Intel's revenue is down is because it's losing market share. It's losing market share in the data center to companies that are more optimized for artificial intelligence. And those include NVIDIA. Companies that are upgrading their data centers are making them more GPU based and less CPU based. And that goes against Intel. Intel benefited when companies were building these data centers that were based primarily on CPUs. And now these replacements that Intel was used to generating significant revenue for the company is going to, to companies like NVIDIA with its Blackwell technology, with its hopper based technology. And that's really bad news for Intel. One bright spot in the quarter was that the company generated $4.1 billion in cash flow from operations. And that's big for Intel. Cash is a concern for the company. Remember, the company's pausing the dividend. This was a big deal for Intel to have to pause its dividend because of the cash shortages. It had spent so much money 
on the manufacturing upgrades and expansions that it hit a shortage in cash. And so this is going to be a critical thing for Intel to continue generating these billions of dollars of cash flow from operations to help the company build its balance sheet back up to a strong position. So they gave us more information about the restructuring plan. As a result of the restructuring and uh, plan they initiated in the third quarter of 2024, the company recognized a $2.8 billion loss in the third quarter of 2024 restructuring charges, but only 528 million of those are non-cash charges, 2.2 billion of which will be cash settled in the future. So they're not paying out this cash yet. They will pay that out later in the future. That's why it's so important for companies to manage the business well. If they overhire or if they build manufacturing or if they expand too quickly and those don't pan out the way they thought and they need to restructure, these restructuring costs are massive. And you can see just how large here. The company's recognizing $2.8 billion in charges related to these restructuring moves. So in October 2022, remember, Intel announced the Foundry operating model, and that took effect in Q1 2024. The Foundry model is designed to reshape operational dynamics and give greater transparency, accountability, and focus on costs and efficiency. It's still very early days of this separation of the two business segments, and we have yet to see the benefits of these separated operating models and investors are looking forward to see how this is going to benefit Intel and investors, especially for the foundry segment, are looking for better news here. The company is losing a great sum of money in the foundry business when the foundry business overall is doing really well. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing reported an excellent quarter with revenue and profits soaring, whereas Intel's foundry segment reported revenue that was down 8% year over year to 4.4 billion, and the company reported billions of dollars in losses in the segment still. Another bright spot for Intel was the data center and AI segment, which jumped by 9% to 3.3 billion. It was the best performing segment of the business, and investors are hoping for better performance here from the company's data center and AI segment. Intel noted that it continues to lead the AI PC category and is on track to ship more than 100 million AI PCs by the end of 2025. So the previous number I got from Intel was that they were gonna ship 40 million PCs AI by the end of 2024. So this number suggests that they're gonna do 60 million AI PCs in 2025. Because if you add the 100 million by the end of 2025, and you subtract the 40 million expected in 2024, that brings me to the 60 million number, which would be an increase of 50% for Intel's AI PCs in 2025. More importantly, Intel launched its Gaudi 3 AI Accelerator, which delivers twice the networking bandwidth and 1.5 memory bandwidth of its previous predecessor for large language model efficiency. Investors are looking to see if Intel can gain market share with the Gaudi 3 AI Accelerator. AMD recently launched a competitor as well, both of which are hoping to gain market share from NVIDIA, which has an over 90% market share in this segment. So investors are hoping that Intel can make a small dent in this market because that would be a huge positive for Intel stock investors. So Intel is now trading at a forward price to earnings of 21, which is the cheapest this stock has been trading for, or roughly the cheapest it's been trading for all year long here in 2024. So do I still think the stock is a buy following these results? I think so. I think the answer is yes. However, I will say that Intel is one of the more riskier investments I'm following right now because of all of the moving parts and how long it's going to take for the company to bring it all together. This is not going to be an overnight success, not even in one quarter. And so it's a huge risk for investors betting on Intel to get things right, betting on these massive investments to pay off for Intel in the long term. So it's one of those situations where it's a really high risk but there's also a really high return potential 
for Intel. So this should be only for investors with a high risk tolerance. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.